Hello and welcome to the third episode of this Every Move Explained series in which chess legend Alexander Alakine, the fourth world chess champion, will be playing with the white pieces versus Poindul, who played this game in 1936 against Alakine, and the game began with e4, and so this move controls the center, it releases the bishop and the queen, and black responded with e5, also controlling the center, covering the d4 square, keeping the game symmetrical, and also releasing the bishop and the queen. And the next move was knight to f3. And this move develops a piece off the back rank, attacks the d4 and e5 squares, and most importantly attacking black's pawn. And black develops the knight to defend this pawn. And next we have bishop to b5, the Rui Lopez opening. And so this bishop develops to b5, attacking the knight, which puts pressure on this e5 pawn as the knight is a defender of this pawn. And also with this bishop to b5 move, white is ready to castle kingside. And so next we have knight to f6 by black, developing a piece, and this is the Berlin defense in the Rui Lopez opening. A uh, very solid defense for black. Uh, this Berlin defense was used by Vladimir Kramnik to defeat the 13th world chess champion Gary Kasparov in, I believe, the year 2000. And so this is a very solid defense for black in the Ru Rui Lopez opening. And so now we have castling by white so he gets his king safe and brings his rook closer to the center and here the knight captures this undefended central pawn and so this gives black a temporary advantage in the center by removing this important pawn but now white counterattacks in the center tempting black to capture further by either knight or pawn captures d4, but this begins to get risky for black because if he decides to capture in the center before developing and getting his king safe, it could lead to trouble for black. So black needs to castle and get his king safe, and so it's probably not a good idea to waste further time capturing a second pawn. And so he retreats first, attacking this bishop. And in modern Berlin uh, defense openings, normally this bishop that's under attack would just capture this knight. And then white would continue with d takes e5. But this game was played in 1936 and so they don't have all the modern uh, knowledge that the current chess masters do so instead white captured here and he left his bishop open here to be captured and so white captures this e5 pawn attacks the knight and so the knight moves and captures the bishop but this knight ends up being trapped after a4 attacking the knight. And so black must make a decision here. And in the game, he moved knight to d6. Maybe a little better would have been knight to d4, which would have probably led to exchanges. But here white has a queen in the center but black has freed both of his pawns by moving this pawn to d5. And so these moves did not occur. And instead we have, after a4, attacking this knight. Black retreats 
to d6. And here he gives back material, but it will allow, after a capture of this knight, it will allow his bishop to recapture and develop this bishop and prepare black to castle. And so capture, and the bishop is developed now, and black is trying to castle immediately. But white moves a piece again in the opening. This knight moves on to black side of the board and threatens to attack the f7 pawn, but more importantly, if black castles, this queen can jump to h5 and threaten a mate here on h7. And so this move could provoke weaknesses on the king side if black castles immediately. And so instead, this bishop retreats and now the queen and bishop are lined up on this knight. And so the queen jumps here to h5 as planned and threatens a checkmate on f7. And in order to prevent that, g6 is played. But now this has opened up a weakness into the black king side. And so the queen moves forward to prevent castling. And now... We have bishop to f8 attacking the queen and trying to prevent the queen from moving further into this position and attacking the rook. But here, rook to e1 is played, bringing another attacker into this fight against black. And the rook controls the e-file, checks the king here. And so black decides to block this check with the knight to e7. And now we have an interesting move. Alakine retreats his knight, leaving his queen under attack. But if the queen is left under attack and then captured by this bishop, we could possibly have this. Queen is captured by the bishop. The knight jumps in here, checking the king. The king must move, and then we would have mate. And so, in order to avoid this, after knight to e4, black plays f5. And before I go further, there is one thing I wanted to go back to in this game. After queen to h6 here, the bishop was played to f8. But instead, if the bishop had captured here, and then a recapture attacking the queen, the game may have resulted with these following moves. This attacks the bishop, but the queen jumps up here threatening to attack the rook. And the rook would move. And then we have check by this rook. Knight blocks. The bishop moves up here to threaten a mate. The rook moves but also remains defending this f8 square to prevent mate. But then we have check, and now the rook is forced to move back and mate. So that was an interesting combination that could have played out here, but instead f8 was played, attacking the queen. And so after rook check, we have... Knight to e7 blocking the check. And the knight repositions, leaving the queen under attack. And, of course, the queen is not taken due to the leading up to a uh, mate. So if the queen... We'll run through that again real quick here. If the queen is captured, then check. King moves and mate here. So in order to prevent that, f5 is played to leave an escape route for the king. And the knight was under attack. So the knight moves in, checking the king. 
And so the king is forced to move. And then we have queen to h4 defending the knight that is now under attack. And now this bishop is moved to g7 to further attack this knight. And so bishop to g5 is played, adding another defender to this knight. But now the second defender of the knight is attacked by this h6 pawn. And so here we have queen to c4. The queen moves to check the king. And now, if we have d5, which was not played, but if d5 was played to block, then we could just have knight capture. So the knight moves away from being attacked. But now, there are too many lines opening up on the king and the queen. And so here we could have a knight move with a discovered check. Also, the rook is lining up on this knight. The bishop is lined up on the knight. And if the knight moves, then the queen will be captured. So, black did not want to open up all these lines toward his king and queen. So, instead of this d5 move, after queen to c4 checking the king, the king just retreats to f8. But, in this position... Black is already in trouble. And so, next, Rook captures e7 is played. And so, this removes one of the defenders around Black's position. And here, the Queen recaptures. And so, now, Knight to h7 is played with a discovered attack on the Queen... But the king is in check, so now black will lose his queen. And so he tries to take as much material with him if the queen is going to be lost. So rook captures, getting the king out of check. And now white captures the queen, and the king captures the bishop. So white is slightly ahead, but black did take some material with him after losing his queen. And so here, it, with the computer evaluation, it shows that white is definitely winning and that he should probably play queen to g8 attacking this rook. But if white would do this, it kind of pulls his queen way over to the side out of position here. And he would be further ahead in material if he captures goes after this rook, but instead, Alakine decides to just capture a pawn, gathering a little bit of extra material, but more importantly, keeping his queen closer to the center of the board, where it can harass, all, harass the black king, and it can also restrict the movements. Now this pawn cannot be moved, which traps in this bishop. The pawn cannot be moved because of a pin on the king. And now the bishop is trapped in because this pawn cannot move. And the rook is also trapped because the bishop cannot move. So this queen move really accomplishes many things. It keeps black pinned in and immobilizes his queen side pieces here. And so now... The bishop captures this undefended pawn on b2 and attacks the rook. So the rook must move, but now the attacker is attacked and must retreat. And so the bishop retreats. And then we have this c4 move, which helps control the center a little bit, but more importantly, it clears this rank for the rook to move over here to e2 and attack the king. So the king moves out of the way to not fall under a check. And so the rook moves here to e2 anyway to control this important central file. And now the rook, which was 
doing nothing here on h7, attempts to move up to h8 and swing over and try and fight for this e-file. But the queen moves closer to the king and threatens to move into black's king position and cause further damage. And so here we have a5. This pawn is pushed, uh, excuse me, pushed forward to allow the a8 rook to get out of its tomb over here and move up to a6 to attack the queen and also potentially move to the center here and fight for this e-file and defend the king. So this knight, which was doing nothing here, moves up closer to the action, ready to jump up into the center and help attack the black king. And now rook to a6, trying to get this rook in a better position, attacking the queen and forcing the queen to move. And the queen retreats with a check, which gives white some more time as black must retreat his king now. And so the king tries to move deeper into a defensive position here, but white is slowly moving into black's position, and the black king will be in trouble here shortly. And I think I overlooked something earlier. I'm going to go back a few moves to this knight to c3 move here. And next, black moved to a6 with his rook. But here, this knight, it looks like it, it can just be captured. Which, if that happened, instead of this rook move, we would have bishop take c3. And then it would lead to a checkmating attack. So that's why that knight was not captured, in case someone was thinking about that. And I should have went over it as soon as that move was made. But we would have this. The king would move. And then we have a discovered attack on the king. And actually, let me go back one move here. So if the king moved there, yes, the discovered attack, the rook would capture a pawn with a discovered attack on the king, and the king would have to move but then we have another check and king moves and checkmate. So that is why the bishop did not capture after this knight to c3 move. That's why the bishop did not capture this knight and instead tried to get his rook into the action, attacking the queen. And queen moves, checking the king and gaining time by forcing the king to retreat and it allows the knight to move further up into black's position by moving to b5 and preparing to jump over to d6. And before the knight moves to d6 and blocks in the rook, the rook jumps over to the e6 square to fight and attack this e2 rook of white. And the knight jumps in here anyway, and it leaves this rook under attack here. But if the rook were to capture, then we would have a checkmate move right here. So if we go back after this knight to d6 move, the rook is not captured because of that checkmate threat on f7 once the rook would move. And so instead we have rook to d8, which gets this rook out of the corner and threatens if, uh, excuse me, if this rook on e2 were to capture the e6 rook and the pawn recaptures, there could be a pin with this knight here now that this rook is on d8. So... After this, the king moves to f1 to protect his rook now, but here black resigned as there is just too much pressure in this position. 
if we have if the game played on we could have a well here it would be black's turn but there's the threat of a capture here of the bishop and then if the rook would capture the queen could jump up here capturing and we would have a fork of the rook and the king and so here black is just running out of options and he decides to resign but i hope you've enjoyed that game with Alakine versus Poindle from 1936. And Alakine is one of the all-time legends, the fourth world chess champion. And if you enjoy tactics in your games, definitely check out some more Alakine games. Do a little research on him because he was one of the great uh, tactical attacking players of all time. And even Kasparov, who is a the 13th world champion, a great attacker. One of his heroes was Alakine. And I encourage you to look over some Alakine games. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to leave comments or suggestions. And thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this third episode of Every Move Explained. Have a great day.